Hey guys, alright this is a big one, there's a lot to get through here. Um, a whole mixed bag. I showed uh, jazz ones in my previous one, so there's a lot of, I guess, rock and experimental stuff in here. Post-punk. Um, my Body Valentine, this is a Glider EP on uh, Creation Records. Um, contains Soon, which is from Loveless, but the tracks uh, Off Your Face is really worth listening to. Um, really beautiful stuff, and Glider itself. Uh, really happy to have this. I got this in a trade uh, with my friend Ben. Very cool. Uh, Swerve Driver Rays. I was, I, I've been looking for this for a very long time. Uh, this is an Australian pressing on Shock, but it, uh, I think it originally came out also on Creation Records. UK Shoegaze comes with the bonus 7 inch. Uh, amazing, amazing record. Uh, well, I'll talk about this. I'll talk about this, this record in a later video. I sort of want to talk about it a bit more in detail. Um, shouldn't even be in the pile really, same with this record. Uh, old Dennis, uh, this is a record that's been eluding me for some time. Uh, wonderful classic, I don't need to talk about it. Don Nix in God We Trust, this is a country funk record with uh, elements of gospel and uh, soul I suppose. It's, it's a very wonderful uplifting record. Uh, there's Don himself with a flying burrito brothers t-shirt. Uh, I don't know many people talking about this record, uh, but I, I love it. Look at that gatefold too, it's an absolutely wonderful photograph. Um, very cool. Slayer, South of Heaven. Um, probably something you don't normally associate with my channel, but I, I love this record. I'm really happy to finally, after like a few years, uh, pick up an original press. This is an original Australian pressing uh, on Geffen. Look at, look at that for a cover. So cool. Um, not quite as cool as the back of um, Rain and Blood. Yeah, on Def Jam. Really cool. Um, yes, the camera's still working. Another one you may be surprised to see on this channel. Uh, I have a massive soft spot for this record. I really, really love it. Uh, Pearl Jam Versus. This is an original US pressing. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, I, I dig this record a lot. Uh, I hadn't heard it properly in a very long time, so when I put it on the other week, uh, I was just grinning. Yeah, I, I love this record. Um, this is something that I got really cheap through a local seller here. Um, I'm really grateful to have it because you just don't see them around. Uh, I'd never seen a copy in person up until getting this. Uh, absolutely classic. It's ECM, but it's sort of jazz and funk. Um, orientated I suppose. It's not funk, it's a bit funky but it's just you're really strange. Um, jazz, uh, German jazz with sort of bells and uh, yeah it, it's great uh, on ECM. Graham Parsons, this is a New Zealand pressing. Um, for whatever reason the print job's gone a bit weird and it's got like a purpley pink hue to it. Uh, I think that's kind of cool. Um, Got a bit of damage on the back, but yeah, this is, this is a wonderful record. I'm really happy to get this. I'm still looking for Grievous Angel. Da Smith's Da Queen is Dead. Everyone knows this record. Uh, a, a weird thing has happened where I've been looking for Smith's records. Not not to the point where I want to buy them online, but for some time now in stores, like um, early pressings, and I just haven't seen them. And a local store has got, got in a collection that has... Um, well, so far they've put out every Smiths record apart from the final one, Strange Ways, Here We Come. So I'm hoping they have that and I'll try and jump on it if I can. But so far, I don't have any Smiths records, but I'm a big fan for a long time. Um, and, and I've got, there's, there's a couple more in the stack, but yeah. Happy to start with that one, The Queen is Dead. Comus, uh, Freaky Folk, UK, um, absolutely weird, haunting, strange. Great record, a uh, wonderful record, uh, iconic artwork, um, yeah, creepy, dark, do people call this acid folk, dark folk, I'm not sure. Um, a record that I snapped up seeing it online on a local online site, I got this really cheap for what it is. Um, the cover's a bit dirty, but I cleaned it up on the ultrasonic and it's um, in wonderful, wonderful shape. Um, Sandy Denny being the vocalist, really happy to get this. Uh, it's like folk rock, I suppose you would call it that. Sometimes there's a bit of country in there. Um, it's not as acid or psychedelic or um, dark as I was expecting, but I really enjoy it. 
Um, I was expecting a bit more traditional instrumentation, I suppose, um, based on the cover, but it's not quite that. Uh, five leaves left. This was a bit of a grail for me. Um, this is an original US pressing, which isn't a gatefold. Um, I still got it for a very, very good price considering the condition. Um, the, the original UK pressings are gatefold, um, but the vinyl is silent. Like I can drop the needle and there's nothing on it, which is really wonderful. Um, an artist that I've been a fan of for a very long time, but just because of the priciness of the records, it's just paid off to pay the, the, the long game. You know, I could have bought those reissues when they came out, but I just didn't. Um, yeah, five leaves left. I pointed out on the uh, one of the Facebook pages that the gap between the A and the V annoys the hell out of me. Um, the gap in terms of typography. <laughs> it's just once I see it, I can't unsee it, you know. One of those things. I'm just going to have the standard coffee slurp to keep me caffeinated while I talk. Sensations Fix, Portable Madness. Now this one, for me, doesn't get anywhere near the levels of uh, fragments of light, but this is really cool, um, murky, dark, synthy. It sounds like it was recorded underwater, which is kind of a bad thing, but it kind of adds a really interesting texture to it. Um, yeah, cosmic, I suppose, but it's, it has this really murky, grey, faded vibe to it. Um, this is an original Italian pressing on Polydor. There you go. Uh, okay. Whew. Lots of talking. <laughs> Aldous Harding, uh, this is called Party, came out last year, um, mid midway through last year, and got a lot of hype um, internationally. Aldous Harding is from New Zealand. Um, her, this record got put out on Flying Nun, and it got signed up to 4AD in the UK. Um, I really like this record. It's sort of a singer-songwriter, which is the most vague term ever, but it has really haunting vocals. Um, she has a really strange vocal delivery. She had, she had like quite a famous Jules Holland performance uh, last year that got quite a bit of traction on the internet. Um, people are comparing it to Kate Bush, which is very, very loose. Uh, maybe in sort of ideological terms, maybe, but not necessarily in vocal terms. Um, maybe in terms of like some of the strange Baroque instrumentation, I suppose. Um, yeah, I... I didn't really understand this record at the time, but it's really grown on me. Uh, I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's just for whatever reason I didn't understand it at the time. I wasn't in the mi right mindset, but um, a lot of you guys would actually really like this record. Um, please do check it out. I can highly recommend it to to a lot of people. Um, yeah, um, re really cool. Um, I can't recommend a song. I mean, I, I listen to a podcast with her and she drops people like uh, Vashti Bunyan as her influences, um, which isn't necessarily a direct influence on the sound, but I kind of get where she's coming from. Highly recommended. Um, do I need to slow down? I feel like I'm talking very quickly. This is, uh, as you can see by the title, Sonic Youth Daydream Nation. I remember passing up on an original copy of this about eight or nine years ago for twenty dollars and being a poor student I thought it was very expensive at the time and I didn't do it and that's haunted me for a long time and I was talking to a friend about three weeks uh, about maybe six weeks ago now about how I regret that decision and I've never seen a copy since and then the next day I went into a record store and there was a copy sitting there for thirty dollars which is you know the reissue of this is forty two dollars so uh, I couldn't believe my luck that was very strange um, original US pressing on a Blast First. I'm oh, sorry, it's an original UK pressing. I This is my favourite Sonic Youth record. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I've been having a lot of luck with Sonic Youth lately. It's like a, a weird thing. I had a really a lot of luck with The Fall lately as well. There's things coming through from The Fall that I couldn't find anywhere else. It's very strange. Anyway, Teenage Riot um, is a, a my favourite... Oh, it is. It could be my favourite Sonic Youth song. Okay. Speaking of uh, Sonic Youth, um, this is record is by Lee Renato, uh, not by Lee Renato, it's by Glenn Branca, but Lee Renato features on, does he feature on this one or does he feature on The Ascension? Nope, 
Oh no, sorry, it is. It's Thurston Moore and Lee Ronaldo appear on this record here. So fans of Sonic Youth, uh, check this out. It's not like that. It's a lot more dark and experimental and uh, almost bits of modern classical. Uh, this is lesson number one, two EPs. Uh, the Superior Viaduct reissue. And this one here is called The Ascension. Absolutely wonderful. This reminds me of... It's, it reminds me massively of Godspeed You Black Emperor, but, you know, seven or eight, maybe nine years before Godspeed You Black Emperor. It just blew my mind. Um, I, when I heard this, uh, I was genuinely uh, jaw-dropped. And that hasn't happened in a long time to the fact where I... I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was just, it's really wonderful. It takes a while to get into it, but if you listen to the last track uh, itself, just called The Ascension, it's really wonderful. Uh, Glenn Branker. These reissues are so cheap to get uh, on Superior Viaduct. Um, take, take the risk, because I, I reckon they're really great. What a great record. Uh, Craig Leon Nomos. This one was on my radar for some time. Um, picked up the, the reissue of it. Uh, wonderful, electronic proto techno but it's more it's not proto techno it's more proto electronic or dance music um yeah it, a, a wonderful record and another one that's sort of essential to music history i suppose or at least modern music history you know really great again this is the superior viaduct reissue i think you can listen to this on youtube uh this is x magma um i think the album's just called x magma no it's called gold ball uh, I bought this maybe without knowing exactly the music. Uh, the cover is great. It's on Wawa reissue. Uh, I knew it was sort of quite rock related. Um, it hasn't connected with me massively yet. Uh, it needs more listens. Um, is it Wawa? No, it's on Longhair, who also did the Wolfgang Downer reissues. Uh, produced by Connie Plank. Uh, it, it, it is crowd rock, I suppose. Um, I need more time with it. I'm, I'm not I'm not hooked straight away after a few listens. Okay, th this record is something that I only discovered um, very recently. This is a uh, um, a really wonderful. I guess it's like country uh, orchestrations, beautiful, lush, deep, powerful, moving, epic sounding uh, record. Uh, yeah, fraught lyrics, uh, a bit over the top, uh, but yeah, it's it's absolutely wonderful. I, I, I can't believe I went this long without not knowing this record, and maybe I had, maybe I didn't know it because I the artwork is terrible to my eyes. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at it now, and I, I don't know what's going on. Too much is going on as a designer. I'm not a fan of this cover. Maybe that's why I ignored it for so long. Can I don't need to talk about this record. Soundtracks. Uh, this is a I think it, this is a German pressing that came out 10 years after it was released which I'm more than happy with for the price I got it. Um, yeah, really, really great. Uh, Monster Sky is the big track. Mother Sky, sorry. Um, absolutely wonderful. Mm, another can to add to the collection that I'm missing. This is a record that I got from Diana digging in the crate as a contest entry, um, as, as a prize. This is really interesting stuff. Uh, it's spacey, synthesizer, ambient, uh, strange textures. It's a 2LP thing, wonderful artwork. It sounds incredible. Um, lots of bubbling and strange things going on. Um, nice. Bits of crowd rock and space rock uh, in it on the Tonzenon label. I don't know that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I want to listen to it a bit more and talk about it a bit more in detail later because I think it's definitely worth me going into um, once I'm fully absorbed into the record. All right, getting there. Only a few left. Thanks for sticking around if you have so far. 15 minutes, Jesus Christ. I better um, do a bit of the old shuffle. As we're quite far away now, aren't we? There we go. Um, the Velvet Underground loaded. I picked up a New Zealand pressing of this a while ago. I locked out upon a US copy for a very cheap price. Um, the record cover isn't in a, a great shape, but the record is in, is in VG++++ shape. Uh, super happy. I love this record. 
I'm sure that you do too. Now this record, I picked this up for a dollar because I had read about this record. I understand the story behind it. The Nashville musicians, the guys that played with Bob Dylan, Neil Young, the, you know, I know about the track Stone, what's it called? Stone Fox Chase, which is a really great track. Uh, I took a risk on it. I like it. It's, it's decent. It's interesting. It sounds like a library record of country funk music, or you can tell that each track is recorded to cater to a specific style or mood, I suppose, rather than an album that flows as an album. You can tell that these guys are session musicians who wanted to create a song specifically to capture a sound or a feel, and then they did another song which would capture a sound or a feel again. Um, so, it's a great cover. I, I like it. Is that enough for me to keep it? I suppose it is. We'll see how we go. I'll see how I go for storage space. <sighs> Obscure record here. No, this is a station to station. Um, I've been wanting to get this cheaply for some time and I found it at a local record store. Uh, I don't know about... I am imagine in the UK and the US this record is everywhere for cheap. Uh, not so much here. Um, for some reason this is the more pricier. Not for some reason, I mean it's a fantastic record. It's one of the more pricier Boyer records to get. Uh, this is a New Zealand pressing. Um, what can I say about that record that hasn't been said already? Not much. Uh, this is a record that I can't get enough of at the moment. I avoided the raincoat. I, I say avoided, I didn't. I ignored the raincoats. Um, avoided would mean I knew about them, but I didn't want to investigate. Um, I think I'd heard other bits that didn't really grab me. I didn't realize how African influenced this record was going to be until I uh, someone recommended it to me specifically and I listened to it and I was blown away by the feeling the African sounds uh, mixed with post-punk and yeah, the, obviously the link to the slits and stuff like that. Uh, Charles Haywood plays on here from uh, This Heat and uh, is he from Camboil now? And uh, Robert Wyatt is on this too if that, that adds some sort of cool uh, bonus points in there. <laughs> The uh, the Smiths, we know this record, debut record. I feel like with the Smiths they get better with each release. Um, I mean, this has got a couple of decent tracks on it, hasn't it? I mean, they're good songs. Pretty Girls Make Grave, Still Ill, Hand in Glove are my favourites. Um, Meat is Murder, this is a fantastic record. I, I This is my second favourite rec Smiths record behind Stranger Is Here We Come. Headmaster Wrist Jewel, I want the one I kind of have. That joke isn't funny anymore, it's an amazing song. How soon is now? I'm still not sick of that. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, what is this pressing? Australian pressing. Yes, and the other one's Australian pressing too. Uh, this is a record that I have been chasing for ages just to get an, an original pressing, whether that's UK, US, Australian, whatever. I see the four women with beards pressing everywhere around um, and it, I know it sounds terrible you know people say this is one of the worst sounding reissues you can get and I just find th this press this is really hard to get this copy of it especially lately so I'm really happy to get that found it really cheap at a local and lastly the modern lovers uh, absolute classic you know this 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 album sort of for me it's proto punk but it also links in like not not it sort of ties perfectly in with the sort of hints of like a 60s sound with the organ. Um, it's like that perfect bridge between the post-punk and punk stuff to come and the, and the 70s stuff just before it. Um, it's a really wonderful record. I can hear where the Strokes got their sound from and to a degree their artwork sensibility I suppose in the early days. Uh, yeah, The Modern Lovers is, is, is wonderful. There we go, what are we on here? We must be close to like 20 minutes. Yes, we've got 20 seconds to go and it's 20 minutes long. Um, so I'll end it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you, you um, tuning in. We got through a lot of records there. I can now file these away. <laughs> See you guys later.